audible to you? Yes, you are audible. Please switch on your camera, sir, if possible. But uh, uh, your voice is very uh, low side. Am I audible to everyone? Are you audible to everyone? Now, now it is it is clear. Now it is clear. And uh, unfortunately, uh, my laptop camera is not working. So I have joined with uh, my mobile also. So. Never mind, sir. Never mind, uh, sir. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, sir, please uh, mute visible. yourself. Yes, you are visible and audible too. Please mute yourself for a second. Let me just uh, formally invite you for this session. So good afternoon, everyone. Our guest for today, our speaker for this session is Dr. Praveen Kumar Mishra. He is assistant professor uh, at the Department of St Mathematics and Statistics in Dr. Shakuntla Mishra National Rehabilitation University at Lucknow. Uh, sir has uh, more than 16 years of teaching experience and uh, many reputed uh, research papers to his name in the field of statistics and now in the field of data science as well. Sir has spared his valuable time to us. Thank you so much, sir, for joining. So uh, I hand over the session to sir. You can start, sir. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Dr. Anuradha. Uh, I hope uh, I am audible to all the participants right now and uh, as well as I am visible to all of you also. Uh, yes. Somehow I am managing uh, myself so that I am visible and audible both. I am using two devices. So in between, if any type of glitch, uh, please inform me so that uh, I can manage. Uh, sir, I'm stopping the sharing. You can uh, uh, share your screen and start. Is it visible to all of you? My slide is visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Sir. It's visible. Okay. Just a second. Put it in slideshow mode, sir. It will be better. Just, just, just a second. Yep. Just a second. Take your time. Take your time, please. I think now it is uh, in slideshow. Uh, my slide is moving or not? Uh, no, not yet. It is in normal mode, not slideshow. Okay. Now. Is it so moving? Please, you can forward your slides to me. I will uh, uh, share it on your behalf if it is not sharing. Yeah, it's moving, sir, but it uh, just one minute, please.
so now I think it is visible to all of you and I'm also visible to all of you. Yes, sir. Everything is fine now. You can start. Yes. Okay. So uh, myself, uh, Dr. Anuradha has already given my introduction. Uh, myself, Dr. Pratik K. Mishra from Dr. Shabdhan Shai National Rehabilitation University. And uh, actually this lecture was scheduled in uh, early in the morning. Uh, it uh, should be the starting lecture, introduction to machine learning. Uh, but somehow uh, Shalab sir was busy and uh, he has to take the lecture. So this was adjusted. I know this is the time after lunch and uh, it is very difficult to uh, be in the lecture and it's at an introductory lecture. So uh, nothing to uh, be very complicated and mathematical type of things in this introductory lecture. And after that, when I take uh, the further lectures of uh, uh, like other components or parts of this machine learning process, so then it will be uh, uh, some technical one. So I should start. So first of all, uh, what is the concept of this machine learning? So uh, So, just a second. So, this machine learning enables uh, IT systems to recognize pattern on the basis of existing algorithms and data sets and to develop adequate solution concepts. Therefore, in machine learning, artificial knowledge is generated on the basis of experience. Now, in order to enable the software to independently generate solutions, the prior action of people is necessary. Once these two steps, these above two steps have been completed, the system can perform the following tasks by machine learning. What are these tasks? Finding, extracting, and summarizing relevant data. Then making predictions based on analysis of these data. Calculating the probabilities for specific results. Actually, uh, the, uh, most of the part of this machine learning is based on the probabilistic models, probabilities. So then next is adopting to certain development and processes based on recognition of patterns. So these are uh, the learning outcomes now, uh, the question is how machine learning works. So, through data input and certain commands, the computer is enabled to learn to identify certain objects like persons, objects, etc., and to distinguish between them. Now for this purpose, software is supplied with data and trained. For instance, the programmer can tell the system that a particular object is human being or it is equal to human. And another object is not a human being that is equal to no. The software receives continuous feedback from the programmer and these feedback signals are used by the algorithm and adopt and optimize the model. With each new data set fed into the system, the model is further optimized so that it can clearly distinguish between human and non-humans in the end. Now, uh, machine learning and its most popular applications. Uh, machine learning is applied uh, you, you are very well uh, aware at uh, this uh, Netflix, Amazon, everywhere, Netflix, Amazon, as well as uh, for, for Facebook face recognition. For you as a user, machine learning is, for example, reflected in the possibility of tagging people. Uh, all of you have uh, this exercise. Uh, tagging uh, uh, your, your friends and uh, relatives on Facebook, uploaded images 
In fact, Facebook, uh, this is very important fact that Facebook has the largest face database in the world. Large, the data fed by users into social networks is used by Facebook to optimize and train machine learning system in terms of visual recognition. Now, another application of machine learning that is now firmly integrated into everyday life is automatic detection of spam. That is integrated into almost all email programs. Within the scope of spam detection, the data contained in the emails is analyzed and categorized. The spam and non-spam patterns are used in this respect. If an email is recognized as junk mail, the program learns to identify spam mails even more efficiently. Now, other areas of application of machine learning includes search engines rankings, combating cyber crime, and preventing computer attacks. Now, the com commercial applications of machine learning, with the help of machine learning, economic data can be turned into money. Companies that rely on machine learning or machine learning methods are not only able to increase the satisfaction of customer wishes and needs can be evaluated and the following marketing measures can be personalized. This optimizes the customer experience and increases customer loyalty. Also, in addition, uh, machine learning can help companies to find out whether there is a threat of customer migration in the near, near future. Now, uh, how this is achieved? This is achieved, for example, through the automatic evaluation of support requests. An alternative is to analyze those characteristics that customers who have already migrated in the past have in common. If those existing customers who also have these characteristics, what characteristics are uh, those who have already migrated? Sorry. So if these those customers uh, uh, who also have these characteristics are then filtered. are then filtered out on the basis of characteristics resulting from the analysis. And then company receives a list of customer group at the risk of migration. At the risk of migration. So with the help of characteristics, those customers who have already migrated uh, they are filtered on the basis of characteristics resulting from the analysis and the company receives a list of customers, uh, a list of customer group actually, uh, that is on the risk of migration. And the company will take appropriate measures and uh, to retain these customers, right? In addition, more and more chatbots are be being used in the area of telephone customer services, these are automated programs that communicate with the customer. Mm -hmm. In this way, the chat boards can optimize their cognitive abilities with regard to the interpretation of the tone in different situations. In addition, the chat boards are able to forward the call. For example, if it is more complex, request to an employee for call center. Uh, furthermore, machine learning is a key technology in the development of an autonomous system. In addition to driverless cars, machine learning is also used in collaborative robots. Other areas of application for machine learning would be uh, like uh, <coughs>
analysis of this stock market then credit card fraud detection this happens very frequently uh, automated diagnostic diagnostic process then acquisition of land mines in acoustic sensor and radar system so these are other applications now machine learning the technology leader uh, in addition to uh, microsoft google facebook ibm amazon and so on they spend enormous financial resources on the use and further development of machine learning ibm's watson center supercomputer is still best known appliance for machine learning watson is mainly used in the medical and financial sectors now also cloud providers such as google microsoft amazon web service and ibm have now created services for machine learning with their help it is also possible for developers who do not have a specific machine learning knowledge to develop applications these applications are able to learn from freely definable set of data depending on the provider these platforms have different names like ibm have watson amazon uh, having the name amazon machine learning microsoft is azure ml studio and google having tensorflow now in addition to these platforms we should have a there is broad highly qualified uh, platform source programs through which machine learning have been made accessible to a wide uh, audience that you as a developer or data specialist can work within it now the key elements of uh, what are the key elements of machine learning there are a good number of machine learning algorithms in use by the data scientists today in fact some research indicates that there are perhaps tens of thousands in addition hundreds of new algorithms are put forward for use every year based on uh, popular opinion all machine learning algorithms today are made up of uh, three components uh the, these three components are as uh, you can see representation evaluation and optimization so uh with this figure you can understand the components we are uh, we need three components to teach machine uh first is data the first component is data which is most important so first component this is data then features and then algorithms so here you can see so this machine learning is the intersection of these three first is what is called data then what are the features then algorithms there is also data mining classical programming and data science so these all are means uh, intermingled <coughs> so uh, data first of all the data so there are two main ways to get the data first is manual and other one is automatic so manually data collected contains far fewer errors but it takes more time not only time a lots of administrative convenience is required lots of money is required that makes it more expensive in general automatic approach is cheaper you are gathering everything you can find and hope for the best now what are the features also known as the parameter parameters in terms of uh, statistics we always uh, talk in terms of uh, parameters and variables 
So also known as parameters and variables. When data is stored in tables, it's simple. Features are column names, but what are they if they have 100 GB of cat pictures? We cannot consider each picture as a feature. So that's why selecting the right feature usually takes a way longer than all other machine learning parts. That's also the main source of error. Feedbacks are also subjective. They choose only features they like or find more important. The now next, next is algorithms. Most obvious part, any problem can be solved differently. <clears throat> the method you choose affects the precision, performance, and size of the final model. There is one important term, how if the data is crappy, even the best algorithm wouldn't help. Sometimes it's preferred as garbage in, garbage out. So don't pay too much attention to the percentage of accuracy. Try to acquire more data first. So now types of machine learning. Machine learning is, uh, as you can see, it is uh, broadly classified as following headings, under following headings. Uh, machine learning, first is, you can see, this is supervised learning. Then next is unsupervised learning. Uh, with these two, I think all of you are very much familiar. Then reinforcement learning, then deep learning, and then deep reinforcement learning. So these are the categories under which uh, machine learning is divided. So now, uh, initially researchers it stated out, uh, started out with uh, uh, supervised learning. This is the case of uh, housing pr price prediction discussed earlier. This was followed by unsupervised learning. <clears throat> unsupervised learning where the machine is made to learn on its own without any supervision. Scientists discovered further that it may be a good idea to reward the machine when it does not uh, does the job the expected way. And there come the reinforcement learning. This is a very important concept. Then very soon, the data that is available these days has become so huge that the conventional techniques developed so far failed to analyze the big data and provide the predictions. Thus came the deep learning where human brain is simulated in artificial neural networks, that is ANN, created in our binary computers. The machine now learns on its own using the high computing power and huge memory resources that are available today. It is now observed that deep learning has solved many of the previously unsolvable problems and the technique is now further advanced by giving incentives to deep learning networks as awards and there finally comes deep enforcement learning. So uh, first uh, type of uh, machine learning, first category is supervised learning. <coughs> Examples, models are defined in advance in order to ensure an adequate allocation of the information to the respective model groups of the algorithms. These then have to be specified. In other words, the system learns on the basis of given input and output pairs. Who acts as a kind of teacher provides appropriate values for a particular input. The aim is to train the system in context of successive calculations with the different inputs and outputs and to establish connections. Uh, advertisement popularity, selecting advertisement that will perform well in often a supervised learning task. Many of the ads you see 
as you browse on the internet are placed there because a learning algorithm said that they were of reasonable popularity or clickability. This is very important. Then uh, another thing is spam classification. If you use modern email system, chances are you have encountered a spam filter. Uh, that spam filter is a supervised learning system, fed email examples and labels. These systems learn how to preemptively uh, pre filter the malicious emails so that their users is not harassed by them. Many of these also behave uh, in such a way that a user can provide new label to the system and can learn user preference. Then uh, another point is face recognition. Uh, I think all of you have used, uh, all of you have a Facebook account. Most likely uh, your face has been used in supervised learning algorithm that is trained to recognize your face. Having a system that takes a photo, finds faces and guesses who that is in a photo, suggesting a tag in a supervised process. It has multiple layers to it, finding faces and then identifying them, but is still supervised. Then it comes unsupervised learning. In Unsupervised learning, artificial intelligence learns without predefined target values and without rewards. It is mainly used for learning segmentation, that is clustering. The machine tries to structure and sort the data entered according to certain characteristics. For example, a machine could very simply learn that coins of different colors can be sorted according to the characteristics like color in order to structure them. Because unsupervised learning is based upon the data and its properties, we can say that unsupervised learning is data driven. The outcomes from an unsupervised learning task are controlled by the data and way it's formatted. Some areas you might see unsupervised learning crop up R, that is recommended uh, system, buying habits, grouping user logs. <clears throat> then comes the reinforcement learning. So personally, I prefer to look in, in reinforcement learning as a learning from mistakes. Place a reinforcement learning algorithm into any environment and it will make a lots of mistakes in the beginning. So long as we provide some sort of signal to the algorithm that associates good behavior with a positive signal and bad behaviors uh, with a negative signal. <clears throat> We can reinforce our algorithm to prefer good behaviors over bad ones. Over time, our learning algorithm learns to make less mistakes than it used to. Reinforcement uh, learning is very uh, behavior driven. It has influences from the fields of neuroscience, psychology. For any reinforcement learning problem, we need an agent and an environment as well as a way to connect the so, uh, to connect the two through a feedback loop now in video games one of the most common places to look at reinforcement learning is in learning to play games Look at uh, Google's reinforcement learning application, Alpha Zero and Alpha Go, which learn to play the game Go. Our Mar Mario is an example. Uh, uh, I can remember uh, my childhood where we play that game and it was very popular at that time. So that is also a common example. Currently, I don't know any production grade game 
that has reinforcement learning agent deployed as its game AI. But I can imagine that this will soon be an interesting option for game to employ. Then industrial simulation for many robotic applications, think assembly lines, it is useful to have our machines to learn, to complete their task without having hard code, uh, their processes. This can be cheaper and safer option. It can even be less prone to failure. We can also insensitize our machines to use less electricity so as to save us money. More than that, we can start this all within a simulation so as uh, to not waste money if uh, we put, uh, potentially break our machines. Then also uh, resource management, reinforcement learning is a good uh, for navigating complex environments. It can handle the need to balance certain requirements. Uh, for example, Google's data centers, they use reinforcement learning to balance the need to satisfy our power requirements but do it as efficiently as possible, uh, cutting major costs. How does this affect us and average person? Cheaper data storage costs for uh, us as well as less of an impact on the environment. We are all of uh, us what we share. <clears throat> now uh, uh, we can understand this uh, uh, reinforcement learning. So uh, suppose we have a pet dog, consider a uh, training pet dog. We train out our pet to bring a ball to us. We throw a ball and uh, that dog runs after it. We throw the ball at a certain distance and ask the dog to fetch it back to us. Every time dog does this right, uh, we reward the dog. Slowly, the dog learns that doing the job rightly gives him a reward. And then the dog starts doing the job in the right way every time in future. So exactly this concept is applied in reinforcement type of learning. That technique was initially developed for uh, machines to play games. The machine is given an algorithm to analyze all possible moves at each stage of the game. The machine may select one of the moves at random. If the move is right, the machine is rewarded. Otherwise, it may be penalized. Slowly, the machine will start differentiating between the right and wrong moves. And after several iterations, it would learn to solve the game puzzle with better accuracy. The accuracy of winning the game would improve as the machine plays more and more games. Uh, this also happens in case of uh, small children. Uh, if you assign some task to them and uh, tell them that if you do it correctly, uh, we will uh, give you a chocolate or toffee or something, something. So initially they uh, make some mistakes, but Doing again and again, they learn to do the task correct, correctly. <clears throat> so entire process of this uh, reinforcement learning is can be shown depicted in the following diagram. Here is the learner. This is the environment, sensory input, reward, and action. So this technique of machine learning differs from the supervised learning in that you need not uh, supply the labeled input of, uh, or output pairs. The focus is on finding the balance between exploring the new solutions versus exploiting <clears throat> the learned solutions. Please uh, mute yourself who is speaking in between. Uh, 
and rather ma'am somebody is unmuted hello sir the participants have been muted now okay. so next is data visualization our uh, data visualization is an important skill in applied statistics and machine learning our uh, statistics does indeed focus on quantitative descriptions and estimations of data data visualization provides an important uh, suit of tools for gaining and, and gaining a qualitative understanding this can be helpful uh, when exploring and getting to know a data set and can help with identifying patterns corrupt data outliers and much more with a little domain knowledge data visualizations can be used to express and demonstrate key relationship in plots charts that are more visceral to yourself and stakeholders the measures of association of significance data visualizations and exploratory data analysis are whole field themselves and will recommend a deeper dive into some of the books mentioned let's took a basic charts and plots you can use to better understand your data there are five key plots that you need to know well the basic data visualization that is line chart bar chart then histogram box plot scatter plot etc now next is uh, deep learning the deep learning is a model based on artificial neural networks more specifically convolutional neural network cnn there are several architectures used in deep learning such as deep neural networks deep belief networks recurrent neural networks and convolutional neural networks these networks have been successfully applied in solving the problems of computer vision speech recognition natural language processing bioinformatics drug design medical image analysis and games there are several other fields in which deep learning is so actively applied the deep learning requires huge processing power and huge amount of data which is generally e easily available these days then next is deep reinforcement learning deep reinforcement learning combines the technique of both deep and reinforcement learning the, as its name suggests the reinforcement learning algorithms like q learning are now combined with deep learning to create powerful drl model the technique has been with a great success in the field of robotics video games finance and healthcare many previously unsolvable problems are now solved by creating drl models there is a lots of research going on in this area and this is very actively pursued by the industries so far you have got a brief introduction uh, to various uh, brief uh, uh, machine learning models <clears throat> so now uh there uh, it's a introduction to machine learning algorithms there are two ways to categorize them the first is grouping of algorithms by their learning style and the second is grouping of algorithms by their similarity in the form of or function so first grouping algorithms grouped by learning style that is supervised in uh, first is supervised learning input data is called in this type of uh, style input data is called training data and has known label or result such as uh, spam or not spam or a stock price at a time a model is prepared uh, through a training process in which it is required to make predictions and is corrected when those predictions are wrong the training process continues until the model achieves the desired level of accuracy on the training data examples problems are classification and regression then example algorithms include logistic regression and the back propagation neural network 
Then algorithms for supervised learning. There are several algorithms available for uh, supervised learning. Some of the widely used algorithms of supervised learning are, uh, all of you are well aware of these algorithms, K nearest neighbor, KNN, then decision trees. Uh, we will discuss uh, these uh, topics in further lectures like decision tree and based logistic integration. We will discuss in further lectures. Uh, decision trees, name based logistic regression, then support vector machines. <coughs> then unsupervised learning input data is not labeled and does not have known results. A model is prepared by deducing structures present in input data. This may be strap general rules. It may be thorough a mathematical process to systematically reduce redundancy, or it may be to organize data by sim similarity. Examples problems are uh, like clustering, dimensionality reduction, and association rule learning. <clears throat> then a priori algorithm means uh, association rule mining, then k means. Then uh, there is semi-supervised learning. Input data is mixture of labeled and unlabeled examples. There is a desired prediction problem, but the model must learn the structures to organize the data as well as make predictions. Example problems are classification and regression. Then example algorithms are extensions uh, to other flexible methods that make assumptions about how to model the unlabeled data. Then algorithms uh, grouped by similarity, grouped by similarity in terms of their function, for example, tree-based methods and neural network inspired methods. The next is uh, there are regression algorithms, regression in concern with modeling the relationship between variables that is iteratively refined using a measure of error in the predictions made by the model. Regression methods are a workhorse of statistics and have been co-opted in statistical machine learning also. This may be confusing because we can uh, use regression to refer to the class of problem and class of algorithm. Really, regression is a process. The most popular regression algorithms are First one is ordinary least square regression, OLSR, linear regression, logistic regression, stepwise regression, multivariate or adaptive regression, splines, mass, it is known as locally estimated scattered plot, smoothing loss. <coughs> then instance based algorithms. Instance based algorithm uh, learning model is a decision problem uh, with instances or examples of training data that are deemed important or required to the model. Such methods uh, typically build up a database, for example, uh, data and compare new data to the database using a similarity measure in order to find the best match and make a prediction. For this reason, instance-based methods are also called winner-take-all methods and memory-based learning. Focus is put on representation of the stored instances and similarly, measures used between instances. The most popular instance-based algorithms are KNN, then learning vector quantization, self-organizing, Map, SOM, locally weighted learning, LWL, and support vector machine. Now, uh, K nearest neighbor. The K nearest neighbor, which is simply known as KNN, is a statistical technique. Actually, it is a statistical technique that can be used to uh, for solving for classification and regression problems. So now here you you can see. You can see, consider the distribution of objects as shown in the given image. The diagram shows 
three types of objects marked in red, blue, and green colors. When you uh, so there you can see here three types of objects: red, some are blue, and this is green. So when you run the KNN algorithm, the diagram shows these three. Then when you run the KNN classifier on this data set, the boundaries for each type of object will be marked as shown. See here, for these red objects, here is a boundary line with this. For green also, this. <clears throat> then for blue also, there is a boundary line, this, this. Now consider a new unknown object that you want to classify as red, green, or blue. Suppose this. Suppose this object we have to classify as red, blue, or green. So as you see it uh, visually, the unknown data point belongs to a class of blue objects. Mathematically, it uh, this can be uh, concluded by measuring the distance of this point with every other point in the data set. When you do so, you will know that most of its neighbors are of blue colors and the average distance to red and green objects would be definitely more than the average distance of blue objects. Therefore, this object can be classified as belonging to blue class. So the KNN algorithm can also be used for regression problems. The KNN algorithm are available as ready to use in most of the uh, machine learning libraries. Then is uh, support vector machine. Now you can look at the following distribution data here. The three classes of data cannot be linearly separated. You see, uh, no linear regression model can be uh, modeled here. So the boundary curves are non-linear and So you cannot make any linear model here. So boundaries curves are non-linear here. In such cases, finding the equation of curve becomes very complex. It's a, it's a very complex job to fit a linear model. So the support vector machine comes handy in determining the separation of boundaries in such situations. Then there are regularization algorithms and extension made to another method, typically regression methods that penalizes models based on their complexity, favoring simpler models that are also better at generalizing. So I have listed regularization algorithms separately here because they are popular for so be rich. <coughs> Regression, then least absolute shrinkage and selection operator lasso, then elastic net, least angle regression. So these are the popular denote. Then uh, decision tree. Decision tree methods construct a model of decision made based on actual values of attributes in data. Decisions fog in trees structure until a prediction decision is made for a given record. 
decision trees are trained on data for classification and regression problems. Decision trees are often fast and accurate and a big favorite in machine learning. And these are some popular <coughs> algorithms, decision tree algorithms, so this classification and regression tree that is known as CART, then iterative dichotomizer that is ID3, then there is C4.5 and 5.0 different versions, then chi-squared automatic interaction detection that is CHAD, then decision stump M5 and so many other algorithms are there. Now, uh, some Bayesian algorithms. Uh, Bayesian algorithm basically they will follow uh, the Bayes rule of classification, or uh, they will follow the Bayes theorem. Bayes theorem of probability. So most popular Bayesian algorithms are wave-based classifier, then Gaussian wave-based, multinomial wave-based, then average one dependence estimator AODE, Bayesian belief network that is BN, then Bayesian network that is known as BN. Now, name base is used for creating classifiers. Suppose you want to sort out or classify fruits of different kinds uh, from a fruit basket. You may use features such as color, size, shape of a fruit. For example, any fruit that is red in color is uh, round in shape and is about 10 centimeter in diameter may be considered as an apple. <coughs> So to train the model, you would use these features and test the probability that a given feature matches the desired constraints. The probabilities of different features are then combined to arrive at a probability that a given fruit is an apple. Name base generally requires a small number of training data for classification. Then, uh, there are clustering algorithms. Clustering uh, like regression describes the class of problem and class of methods. Clustering methods are typically organized by modeling approach, such as centroid based and hierarchical. All methods are concerned with using the inherent structures in the data to best organize the data into groups of maximum commonality. The most popular clustering algorithms are k-means, then k-medians, then expectation maximization, uh, hierarchical method. All uh, uh, this clustering methods we will discuss uh, in day after tomorrow in detail. Now take example in 2000 and 2004 presidential elections in the United States, uh, they were very close. Very close, the largest percentage of popular vote that any candidate received was 50.7% and the lowest was 47.9. Now if a percentage of the voters were to have switched sides, the outcome of election would have different. There are small group of voters who, when uh, properly appealed to, they will switch sides. These groups may not be huge, but with such close races, they may be big enough to change the outcome of the election. How do you find these groups of people and how do you appeal to them with a limited budget? So the answer is clustering 
and nowadays you people know that uh, there is a election season uh, in five states of india and uh, the most important in uh, which we are living here in uttar pradesh so up elections are there and there are means uh, it it is predicted that it will be a very close contest so in these type of situations clustering is very useful tool to uh, means uh, divide the groups and now uh, election commission has imposed certain restrictions so with a limited budget and different type of uh, uh, advertising media how the political parties will address the situation so these statistical techniques will help them a lot let us understand how it is done first you collect the information on people either with or without their consent any sort of information that might be given some clue about what is important to them what will influence how they vote then you put this information into some sort of clustering algorithm next for each cluster it would be smart to choose the largest one first you craft a message that will appeal to these voters finally you will deliver the campaign and measure to see if it's working clustering is a type of unsupervised learning that automatically forms clusters of uh, similar things it is like automatic classification you can cluster almost anything and the more similar the items are in the cluster the better the clusters are we are going to study one type of clustering algorithm k means uh, it is called k means because it finds k unique clusters and center of each cluster in the mean of the values in that cluster we will discuss uh, on uh, wednesday the another problem is cluster identification how you will identify the cluster cluster identification tells an algorithm here is some data now group similar uh, things together and tell me about those groups the key difference from classification is that classification you know uh, what you are looking for while that is not in the case of clustering clustering is sometimes called unsupervised classification because it produces the same result as classification does but without having predefined classes now we are comfortable with both supervised and unsupervised learning to understand the rest of the machine learning categories we must first understand artificial neural nn which can then uh, association rule learning methods the strap rules that best explain observed relationship between variables and data these rules can discover important and commercially useful associations in large multi dimensional data sets that can be exploited by an organization the most popular association loop learning algorithms are a priori algorithm and eclat algorithm artificial neural networks artificial neural networks are models that are inspired by the structure and or function of biological neural networks they are a class of pattern matching that are commonly used for regression and classification problems but are rarely an enormous subfield comprised of hundreds of algorithms and variations for all manner of problem types now note that uh, i have separated out deep learning from neural network because of massive growth and popularity in the field here we concerned with the more classical methods the most popular artificial neural networks are perceptron multi layer perceptrons that is mlp back propagations so make it gradient descent 
Hopefield network and radial basis function network. Deep learning algorithms. Deep learning methods are a modern update to artificial neural networks that exploit abandoned cheap computation method. They are concerned with building much larger and more complex neural networks and as commented above, many methods are concerned with very large data sets of labeled analog data, such as images, text, audio, and video. Here are some most popular deep learning uh, algorithms are convolutional neural network that is known as CNN, recurrent neural networks, RNN, uh, long short term memory networks, LSTMs, stacked, auto encoders, deep Boltzmann machine, and deep belief that is DBF. Then uh, there are some algorithms which are known as dimensionality reduction algorithms like clustering methods, dimensionality reduction seek and exploit the inherent structure in the data. But in the case, in an unsupervised manner or order to uh, summarize and describe data using less information. Now this can be use, useful to visualize dimensional data or to uh, simplify data, which can then be used in supervised learning method. Many of these methods can be adopted for use in classification and regression. The first one is principal component analysis that is known as PCA. In this, uh, basically, we find that component which is contributing the maximum variance in the model. Then principal component regression, then partial least squares regression, salmon mapping, multidimensional scaling, MDS, projection, pursuit, linear discriminant analysis, LDA, then mixture discriminant analysis, MDA, quadratic discriminant analysis, flexible discriminant, these are the uh, dimensionality reduction uh, algorithms. Then there are ensemble algorithms. Ensemble methods are models composed of okay. multiple. Hello. Is somebody is unmuted. Please mute yourself. I have taken a glass of water. Okay. So, in simple algorithms, <clears throat> in simple methods are models composed of multiple weaker models that are independently trained and uh, whose predictions are combined in some way to make the overall prediction. Much effort is put into what type of weak learners to combine and the way in which to combine them. This is very powerful class of technique and as such is very popular boasting bootstrapped aggregation that is bagging. This bagging concept will be discussed when we discuss uh, the decision trees and uh, the bootstrap is also a very important concept and it will be discussed when we discuss the decision tree part classification decision tree and then pruning. 
overfitting and that will be done then at a boost weighted averages blending stack generalization stacking then gradient boosting machines gradient boosted regression gbrd and another very uh, important concept of random forest after season trees we'll discuss in tomorrow's lecture so this we have already discussed categories then some mathematical foundation which is required uh, mathematical concepts which are very important required for this machine learning what uh, linear algebra is very important uh, for machine learning process linear algebra is a branch of mathematics you are already you all of you are very well known with this branch so linear algebra finds uh, widespread application because it's generally uh, parallelizes extremely well further to most linear algebra operations can be implemented without messaging messaging passing which makes them amenable to map reduce implementations so machine learning skills for machine learning machine learning has very large width and requires skills across several domains the skills that you need to acquire for becoming an expert in machine learning are follow statistics basically all the uh, machine learning concepts are uh, based on statistical concepts like probability theory then uh, estimation process maximum maximum likelihood estimators then operation research is also very much involved in machine learning process so these are uh, the concepts like a statistical concepts probability theory then uh, calculus basic calculus is very much needed optimization techniques and then visualization machine learning implementing machine learning uh, how to implement to develop machine learning applications you will have to decide on the platform the ide and the language for the development there are several choices available and most of this these would meet your requirements easily as all of them provide the implementation of ai algorithms discussed so far if you are developing the ml program on your own the following aspects need to be understood carefully the language of your choice this essentially is your proficiency in one of the language supported in machine learning development the ide that you use this word depend on your familiarity with existing ide and your comfort level then next is development platform there are several platforms available for the development and deployment and most of these are free to use in some cases you may have to incur a license fee beyond a certain amount of uses but uh all, almost are free to use here is a belief of list choices language ide <coughs> uh, these are the languages which are available like python r r is already uh, discussed uh shalab sir is discussing the basic concepts and in the next lecture he will discuss further then matlab octave junior c++ c the list of uh, is not essentially comprehensive however it covers many popular languages used in machine learning development and depending upon your comfort level select a language for the development and develop your models and test <laughs> then uh, ids the list r studio then pycharm i python jupyter network notebook then anaconda i think with all of these you are very much familiar then the platforms which are used uh, ibm microsoft azure google cloud amazon amlflow so all of these are available
Bayesian statistics, this uh, all these concepts we will discuss further. So it is not uh, conditional probability. I think uh, before going to machine learning, we should have some basic knowledge of probability and statistics. And there are the concepts of Bayes theorem, conditional probability, even uh, event algebra, how to uh, do the operations in a probability. So these are basic definitions. I will share the uh, material with all of you so that uh, uh, means it will uh, not be very necessary for all of you because I have seen the list of all the participants and all of you are very well equipped. Uh, that's my hope that all of you are very well equipped with all these concepts. Then lab based classifier. This way we will discuss when we discuss the decision tree concept. <coughs> base theorem. This is basic base theorem. The probability of A given B means conditional probability will be given like this. Assumptions. This multinomial nave based multinomial distribution, which we have already discussed. So, now with this discussion, you know that machine learning is a technique of uh, training machines to perform the activities a human brain can do a bit faster and better than an average human being. Today, we have seen that the machines can beat human champions in games such as chess, alpha go, which are considered very complex. You have seen that machines can be trained to perform human activities uh, in several areas and can add humans in living better lives. Machine learning can be supervised or unsupervised. If you have lesser amount of data and clearly labeled data for training, then opt for supervised learning. Unsupervised learning would generally give better performance and results for large data sets. If you have huge data set easily available, go for deep learning techniques. You also have learned reinforcement learning and deep enforcement learning. You now know that neural networks are their applications and limitations. Finally, when it comes to the development of machine learning models of your own, you looked at the choices of various development languages, IDs, and platforms. Next thing you uh, that you need to do in start learning and practicing each machine learning technique. The subject is vast. It means that there is a width. But if you consider the depth, each topic can be learned in a few hours. Each topic is dependent on each other. You need to take into consideration one topic at a time, learn it, practice it, and implement. The algorithms in it using language of your choice, this is the best way to start studying machine learning and practicing one topic at a time. Very soon, you would acquire the width that is eventually required of a machine learning expert. And that is what I am also doing. Thank you very much to all of you uh, for listening to me. Uh, that's all for my, uh, from my side in this lecture. And that was a very basic and uh, introductory lecture. I don't think you all are very much skilled in this field. So, I don't think uh, I can teach you. It was an introduction and it was my uh, responsibility and duty to give you a brief introduction. It was scheduled uh, the first lecture, but due to uh, some work, Shalab sir has some work. So I have to do that. And as per schedule, it should be there. So I have taken this. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, sir.
सुन रहा था मैम सर आई हैव वन स्मॉल डाउट कैन आई प्रोसीड सर या या Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, this is nice presentation, but this is what we taught about all of the basic. And uh, for a, a, if you go to practical field, sir, as per my knowledge, is it artificial intelligence AI is the combination of deep learning uh, and machine learning, or artificial intelligence and deep learning is different, sir? Oh, uh, actually, both uh, both are intermingled in each other. Means. Uh, there are so many subjects which are intermingled, and we say that we always have a discussion. It is, it is like, uh, uh, like it is first, uh, it is egg or first it is hen. So it is that type of thing. Uh, firstly, is uh, we always say that data science and statistics, right? Then we say that whether it is machine learning. first or ai is first so all of these topics are uh, means uh, uh, so close and so mix up that we cannot say that uh, uh, this is the subset of this one and this is the subset of this one. this is the particular one that is contained in this that particular uh, field so all of these are little mixed and it is it is now uh, it is now very difficult to separate them right so uh i think this is the only answer i can give please mute yourself any sir sir uh, pk misra sir thank you very much for nice presentation uh pk misra sir Yes, yes, I am here. Ah, uh, thank you very much for nice presentation. You have summarized the techniques, the platform, and all these things, the programming language, all these things required for the machine learning. Is it possible for you to share these PPTs among the students? I am going to share just after after my lecture. Sir, I will share all. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, thank me. you. I am very much writing in the group that I will share everything in the group. uh please don't ask for sharing because everything i will share in the group the first session slide i have already shared so i request every participant to please have patience i will share everything the recording the lecture everything will be shared but just so, let the session come to an end you okay. all our faculties please try to understand we will share after the session is over because in the morning when i had shared then somebody said that please share after the session is over so i will share after the session is over please give us some time madam i joined there is the one question uh, sir please I, uh, there is one I question for you sir later on so kindly uh -huh. reshare the uh, first first okay. lecture uh, okay. sir, documents sir there is one question uh, professor bhagya has asked this question uh, i have a question for sir when we should use feature detection algorithms like pca what should be the feature set and size हेलो यस यू आर ऑडिबल सर ओके ओके सो फीचर रिडक्शन टेक्निक्स इट कैन बी यूज्ड फॉर लार्ज डेटा सेट्स एंड एज वेल एज फॉर स्मॉल डेटा सेट्स आल्सो देयर इज नो रिस्ट्रिक्शन एट दैट मींस द डेटा सेट साइज बी लाइक दिस लाइक प्रिंसिपल कंपोनेंट एनालिसिस Uh, we per perform principal component analysis for smaller data sets uh, when we reach the students in MSc. So there are very small data sets, but we can apply uh, the, the techniques manually for small data sets only, like uh, principal component analysis or factor analysis or profile analysis uh, for small data sets. Because earlier uh, these algorithms or softwares were not available. right now lots of softwares are available like r sbs so you can apply these uh, techniques uh, to any uh, data set uh, there is no restriction at all uh, somebody is writing in the group that uh, sir is not audible he is very much audible to all of us i think 
so for those who have some problem with the audio please check your audio connections sir is very much audible uh, abhinav sir is sir audible audible hello yes yes ma'am sir is am audible I... na even i am audible yes ma'am you are yes. audible Ma yes, so everyone is audible. So please, uh, if somebody is having problem, uh, Gomki ma'am, uh, thank you so much for writing. If anyone is having a problem with audio connection, please check your own connection because at our end everything is quite fine. Okay. Any more questions? One one request from my side. I think uh, last question uh, means last uh, request from. Uh, I think it was from uh, Jayant Tripathi ji. right and he was uh, uh, as i remember he was uh, in the last fdp also so i request him personally that sir please have patience uh, we will share each and everything with you uh, well in time don't worry about that and uh, if something is uh, means uh, not shared or you are not able to access we will share it uh, again on the group and the sessions the recorded sessions will also be shared i will share the recorded sessions on youtube as well as google drive google drive as you know that the limit uh, there is a limit of google uh, google drive so i will have to just share the link of the google drive you can download the session and then i will change because i will have to uh, share more uh, content on that google drive so but on youtube the videos will remain remain forever because the previous fdp sessions i have shared to you all uh, in the youtube link only because google drive i have already deleted from google drive okay uh, so um, someone has given the compliment that it was very nice session thank you so much dr anju thank you so much dr anju khandelwal ma'am nice presentation about basics of machine learning uh, thank you ma'am and uh, um, it's to you sir and uh, if there are more questions you may ask otherwise we have uh, 15 minutes time we will start with the next session by 4:50 shalab sir has told to join by 4:30 so we will start 10 minutes earlier maybe by 4:20 is it fine should we we end the session yes, yes ma'am ma okay thank you so much everyone for joining